right hand meant Muslim town. So right across the street from where we're standing is a mosque. And they have like voluntary segregation. So they have the Christians on one side of the town and the Muslims on the other side of the town. So we're totally in Muslim town. And uh, this gal, Kimberly, that's with us, she says, I think we're supposed to go in that shop right there. The shop was like a, a Staples, <laughs> a Ugandan Staples. Right? It's more like a closet with uh, rows of paper in it. So we walked in, and we don't, we don't know why we're here. And, we're, and we were, we're met with the, with the look, not the good look, but the bad look that says, what are you doing in my, stop, my shop? They call us Mazungus. You're Mazungus. You're white people that don't belong. So you're Mazunga. So we go in and then Mazunga, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, wow, what's going to go on here? What's going to happen? And we look in the back and there's a woman there that has this wonderful smile on her face. And the guy that was with me, Jacob, he goes up to her and says, hey, what? We, we just feel like we're supposed to be here. Can we, can we pray for you? Can we pray for your business? She says, you won't believe this, but I was just praying that someone would send someone into my shop to bring Jesus to my workers because they don't know him. <laughs> right? Come on now. <laughs> so we go in and we start, we start talking to these people. Five minutes later, two more people dedicate their lives to Christ yeah. in this shop. Right? One guy I prayed for, he got healed with a back problem and everything else. It was just awesome. Let's go next slide. Witch doctor tree. What you don't know about Uganda here in the United States is the Ugandans are kind of uh, they're, they're, they're being held captive, if you will. They're being deceived by this, this idea of ancestral worship. So uh, outside of Christ, outside of Islam, outside of any other religion, the religion they have is ancestral worship, which says my great, 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 great grandma is going to bring the demons to haunt me if I don't honor and respect her and sacrifice animals to her. Okay, it's pretty bad stuff. So not only are they sacrificing animals, they're sacrificing children. One of the biggest crimes they have, the most common crime they have in this part of Uganda is uh, kidnapping children for sacrifices. You know those little kids I just showed you in that picture? They're at risk every day of getting snatched and taken to a tree like this where they're going to be sacrificed because they're afraid of their grandma. Okay? That's bad. That's a deception, right? That's the devil. Oh, I love to step on his throat. And that's what we did. Turns out this particular witch doctor tree, the witch doctor, I think he cursed himself to death. Yay! No, I'm not really. I mean, hopefully mercy found him. But he's gone. The tree's left. The property becomes very uh, available and cheap. So a church went in and bought the property, and that's where they built a church, which they feed a bunch of kids in an orphanage. It's a really cool story. Oh, by the way, it's a cool-looking tree. This thing's huge. Let's go next slide. So this is what we do. We go and feed the kids. So not only were we bringing you know, power evangelism and power ministry to the streets and, and freeing people from the deception, we were feeding kids. And that's pretty cool. They get these mounds of food, man. They eat like once, once a day. And you'd watch a little three-year-old kid that can barely walk and has a bowl of food that's way bigger than Justin's head, man. It's like this big. <laughs> and, uh, and they would consume this whole bowl of food, and you would just watch their belly go, bloop. Yeah. Oh, they're precious, precious kids. Next slide. All right, this one's going to kind of blow you away, and I... This, this audience will see how this is received, but uh, there's, uh, there's one orphanage that they support. It's called Hope International, and Hope is um, an, it's a full-time orphanage. So the kids actually live on the campus, and they live in a dormitory, and they go to school. and they, So they, they know about Jesus, and all of the kids that are in this picture here have accepted Christ, right? So they're children of God. Um, so we started to talk to them and, and minister to them, and it was an opportunity. Sally and Lori up there, they're the ones that show the show Mercy. They run that thing, and, and they support these kids, and they send their interns down to, to teach <clears throat> and to minister to them. So they have a really good relationship. They've been working for like seven years with these kids, some of them. So as they came in, we started to talk to them. I got to witness to them, and a couple other guys got to witness to them. And then Chris Overstreet got up and, and asked them, had they ever received the Holy Spirit? 
and only one person had raised their hand. So without having a whole theology discussion about receiving the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to have him. Okay, I'll just make it simple. You're supposed to have him. And he's supposed to completely fill you up. So we asked, have they ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? So they said no. So we said, we're going to pray that you receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive a prayer language. All right? For those that don't know what that is, that's the speaking in tongues thing. So we asked for them to receive the Holy Spirit. They do. They start speaking and praying in tongues and singing in tongues. 33 out of 40 kids are laying out on the ground. <clears throat> right? Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is speaking and praying in tongues. It was amazing. It was amazing to see God work in such a powerful way. It was very, very cool. And it really touched Mike and Lori. Next slide. On Sunday, I actually got asked to preach. Now, I went down there. I wasn't a leader. I'm just a, I'm just a dude, right? I'm just going to show up and do whatever they ask me to do. Overstreet comes up and he says, hey, you want to preach? I go, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that wasn't in the brochure. <laughs> he says, well, it is now. So I got an opportunity <clears throat> to preach. Uh, man, it was an amazing day. This place was called, that's the church where you're looking at Brittany in the middle. That's the congregation. That's Pastor Bob up there. He was uh, not only the, the pastor, but he was my interpreter. And he was an awesome guy. My first name's Robert. So I said, I'm Pastor Bob. He says, I'm Pastor Bob. We just got to keep Pastor Bob's together, and that was cool. Um, but they were called the Healthy Christian Living Center. So they're actually a mission. If you guys know what a mission is, they bring people to feed them. They tell them about Jesus, and they feed them. All right? So you come in. To get a meal, you have to hear about God. And then you get fed. Anybody ever been to a mission? Are you still with me? Okay, I'm, I'm going to get to a point, I promise you. And you're going to get rocked. You're getting rocked right now and you don't even know. Right? You're receiving this testimony. And your spirit's getting filled up. And the Holy Spirit's going to take it and it's going to shove it down into your DNA. Trust me on this. So we're standing there and uh, he says we're the, we're the healthy living thing. And man, that just hit a trigger on me. After we got a chance to witness to him, you know, I had a word... Uh, a prophetic word about Uganda and how they're going to be delivered in the 50th year of Jubilee, right? And the, and the love of God is going to come on them and be delivered by Jesus Christ and the living waters are going to flow into the, into the Nile River. Uganda is the headwaters of the Nile. So the living water is going to flow north through the Nile and affect every single country all the way up to the Mediterranean, right? So I told them this word and they were really excited and I said, well, I think the next logical thing to do is ask if people want to be healed. Because they're the healing center. <clears throat> right? Yeah. So sure enough, we asked. We had about 30 people get in line. Prayed for. People were getting healed all over the place. Because there was three of us. Brittany and this other girl, Jesse. And we're praying for them. And this one guy comes up and he says, oh, I have stomach pains. I have like ulcers or something. And I said, all right. So uh, <clears throat> we're just going to pray for that. And, and God's going to take that away. So in the name of Jesus, pain leave right now. Stomach restored. And uh, how do you feel? And he says, wow, it's gone. I go, Praise God. That's cool. So he goes to sit down. The lady behind him comes up, right? And she has the same problem. And Pastor Bob says, well, that's that guy's wife. I go, wow, what an opportunity. So I said, hey, come back, Peter. So I said, I pulled the guy up and I said, okay, put your hand, put your hand on her stomach and say this prayer and boom, boom, boom. And sure enough, she gets healed. Right? How awesome is that? So I gave a short gospel message. It gripped their hearts, not because of me, but because the Holy Spirit was in it. And he was just rocking their world. And I said, hey, does anybody here want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? And I looked at Pastor Bob and I go, you don't do that, do you? Because they're a mission. They tell them about Jesus and they feed them. So an altar call is not part of the program. So when I said, anybody want to come to Jesus? And I said, Pastor Bob, is that okay? And I said, well, I guess it is now because I did. Four people came up. And then I said, I think there's one more. There's one more in the back, right back there somewhere. You're back there somewhere. Here she comes. Wow. Five people accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Awesome. Two of them were Muslim. Wow. And the whole group received the Holy Spirit, and we had more prayer language breakouts. It was awesome. Next slide. I want to show you this slide. This is before and after. This is before and after Jesus. We had tremendous opportunity to